Hey, what's I up, guys? So Rachel Void back here, I'm and as promised, I'm weekend, coming in with some game. gameplay tips um, oh, that you should be thinking about now in-game uh, that'll help set you up for success for your flawless runs. The previous video was more about uh, stuff to do before you go into your matches, and hopefully the two of them help when combined together. So these first two clips are really just to highlight the fact that yes, avoid 3.0 abilities are pretty good, abilities are strong in general, however, if you have solid gun skill, um, you can overcome even the void 3.0 uh, abilities, and so gun skill is going to be first and foremost um, The you know you continue to work on um, in and out of trials. So, <clears throat> going into this next uh, clip know, here, this is just you know giving yeah, the general you idea that um, you and your team are going to always inspect the enemy players. You're going to have an idea generally what they're running, so that you can be thinking about you know what types of things you should and shouldn't be uh, trying to avoid, and what uh, strengths and weaknesses your team has, whether it's CQC, long range, so on and so forth. Uh, and then beyond that, you're going to notice that most every round we're going to at least have an idea that we're going to slide and challenge into uh, mid because it's a very popular lane, and we trust that our gun skill is going to outcompete our opponents. And if we need to change that. We'll change it up when uh, when we need to. All right. So starting off here, like Whoa. I said, sliding into mid, looking for a quick uh, pick. If you can get, you know, with a sniper on your team trying to get one person down, it's a very popular lane. We don't manage to get it. They put down some abilities, so we push forward using our abilities to push them away from their barricade. And then we notice here that I'll come flying over the corner, up high. My teammates uh, challenge from down low that make sure that they don't have one place to look at. They have to uh, look at multiple different areas to try to damage us while we're putting damage into them. You'll notice that all of them were down on the ground, so we were just looking down. It was an easy, easy cleanup there. So once again, same thing. You're going to notice that we're going to fly into mid here. We're going to see if we can get an opening. We don't get one, they slide across, a teammate gets a, uh, an assist here, and then we're going to push in once we have the number advantage. We're going to try to isolate 1v1s if we can, or multiple if we can get 2v1s or 3v1s. <clears throat> push around the corner here, teammates is weak. I notice a shotgun, so I shade step away, and then use my ability, and then try to clean him up with hand cannon if my ability wasn't strong enough to, uh, to finish him. So I played my life there while also trying to deal damage to the opponent. So again, it's going well, but I'm thinking the same thing. I'm thinking I need to slide in here, try to get a pick, create an opening for my team, make us all invisible, take us off radar, look for a pick. I do end up getting the pick, I end up getting two picks. So at this point, our entire team is going to try to push, keep them from getting those revives and uh, making sure that, that we capitalize on this. Unfortunately, it seems like this guy just decided he probably wasn't going to 1v3, gave up, started emoting. I will say... It's an unlikely scenario, but you should never give up mid-round. You should always be trying to, to clutch up, and you'd be surprised how often it can happen. So this stage here, we know what we're doing is working. We have no reason to really change it up, so we're looking to do a similar thing here. Look to see if the opponent challenge. They do, and we're able to get multiple picks here. At this point, honestly, it's more so on the opponents for not changing up their strategy. And no disrespect to anyone, like, oh, this is just to show you examples of what to do and what not to do. And this is more so capitalizing on the enemy team's uh, mistakes. Here. So here's a scenario where you're doing everything right and then things may not necessarily go your way and it starts to go south pretty quickly. You're flanking off radar, you get a pick, and then you listen to your teammates' callouts, you look to where they say that the enemy team is, and they've already rotated. Your teammates are in trouble, they may be going down, and you're in a last guardian standing scenario. At this point, you're pretty much just looking to keep fighting 1v1. So if you notice, that's what I'm doing here. I'm isolating 1v1s and then trying to get my health all the way back up, and then once I'm sure that I've done some damage and my health is gonna uh, refill I'm going to slide back out challenge and take the 1v1 uh, that's my best way to secure the victory in those scenarios okay so this clip is really important because we were up against a really good team top tier players and we were just you know executing our normal uh, uh, strategy until they proved to us that we can no longer and we need to adapt and then as soon as we get a pick again we're using our abilities to push them off balance we're communicating if you listen to background gameplay we're communicating telling each other I'm pushing I'm pushing I'm doing this I'm doing that you know I have them weak I have them weak push 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 and you know we're making sure that we keep each other uh, accountable and and 
uh, uh, hyped up. This clip is important because we noticed that the enemy team beat us one round because they changed up where they were going. They were playing in an area at the bottom of the map that wasn't typical. And we noticed that, and so we decided it's important to decide when to change your strategy. And this is a perfect example of realizing that they played this bottom area, and we could adapt to that, and we could outplay them because they didn't expect us to adapt that quickly. Why well, say no, 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 or something? Because I ran up. No, I, I. And I know you're seeing a lot of gameplay from a sniper's so perspective, but once again, you notice my teammates. They're coming in and they're supporting me in this same lane with their primary weapons, and that does a lot of help. For example, if I get a body shot here, it's going to be cleaned up because my teammates are putting in primary damage. So, you, and again, same thing there. If you are using your primary, if you're not sniping and just laying down fire into the lanes your teammates are pushing, you guys will have a lot of success. And that doesn't matter if you're, you know, panking, auto rifling, submachine. Uh, or what have you because this map lends to all of those things this clip is pretty important because if you listen to the background gameplay it's not a great scenario for us we're down a person and we uh, are basically about to fight a bunch of supers and you know it's a, it's a closed game and it might be for flawless here I think so you know it's important not to get discouraged and to continue looking for picks looking for openings people continue to make mistakes especially in these high pressure scenarios and you just need to keep your composure and realize playing your life and dealing damage while minimizing exposing yourself so in this clip, finding and downing isolated opponents, immediately putting back down revives, and playing your life. So you'll notice a common theme regardless of the loadout is taking mid-map control. So we'll push up, use my ability to help my teammate to the left, while also using my primary to help my teammate to the right simultaneously. But then sometimes you can do everything right and you still find yourself last guardian standing. So the important thing is not to panic. You realize that you pick up ammo, you're going to rotate to your teammates' revives, see if you can get somebody up while also finding the enemy and trying to keep them from getting a revive. Once you have someone up and you have the number advantage, it's all you. And just like that, guys, we come to the end of this video. Uh, I hope these tips and tricks help you reach the lighthouse, whether it's for the first time or for repeat times, uh, so that you can get your flawless loot and just become a better player overall and maybe approach PvP with a different perspective because it can honestly be pretty rewarding if you uh, know what to look for and um, put in some of the time and effort to improve at the playlist. So. If you made it to the end of this video, I do really appreciate your guys' viewership. Consider liking, following, dropping a comment, or something like that. Just let me know that these videos are worth my, uh, my time to, to do because I enjoyed making them, especially if there are people out there that enjoy watching them. Uh, with that being said, uh, I hope you guys have many, many a good flawless run, and you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Until next time, I'll catch you later. Glitch Boyd out.